Hi, I'm Cisco with Acrobotic and I'm here to show you another tip for working with your ESP8266 microcontroller. In other videos, we've shown you how to upload your code to the ESP8266 using the Arduino IDE. We've done this by connecting our development boards over USB to our computers. But sometimes this is simply not possible because we won't have access to the board itself. In such cases, there's a method of uploading your code wirelessly using what's called over-the-air programming or OTA for short. Let's see how that's done. If you've been following along our series, you've seen us show you how to program the ESP8266 using the Arduino IDE. Make sure you familiarize yourself with the process before moving on to this next step. Let's go to the IDE and open up the file menu, examples, and under Arduino OTA, basic OTA. The first thing we'll need is to put in our Wi-Fi settings. Next, we'll scroll down to about line 27 and uncomment the function call to set password. We'll see what that's used for in a little bit. Finally, we'll want to put our own code that we want to run inside the loop function. Notice that there is a single line calling the handle function of the Arduino OTA object. That line needs to be called in order for you to be able to upload new code over the air. So we'll need to make sure that our own code doesn't interfere with this process. The way I'm going to be doing that is by using a flag that I'll call OTA flag, and I'll initialize that to true. I will check that that flag is set with a conditional, and if it's set, then I want that line of code to run. Of course, I don't want to do this forever because I want my own code to run. So what I'll do is inside that conditional, I will check for the amount of time that has elapsed from when the program started running. I'll do this by comparing a variable that I'll define in a second that I'll call time elapse with a number that I'll arbitrarily set to 15 seconds. I'll do it as 15,000 milliseconds. I'm going to update that variable by calling the millis function, which keeps track of the amount of milliseconds that have elapsed from when the program started running. I'll initialize that variable to zero, and I'll add a very short delay inside that while loop so that nothing breaks while that code is running. After time elapse reaches 15 seconds, I want to make sure that I break out of the conditional by setting the OTA flag to false. Notice that the conditional at that point will always evaluate to false and the rest of the code inside the loop will run. In my case, I will simply run a blinking program that toggles on and off the built-in LED on the ESP8266. I'll use the digital write function on pin 2 and I'll use a simple trick for inverting the previous state of the pin. I'll add a one second delay and I won't forget to set up the pin as an output inside the setup function. Let's go ahead and save this file. I'll choose my desktop and I'll rename it to basic OTA custom. I'll make sure that my correct board and port are selected. In this case, SLAB USB to UART, as well as the Node MCU 1.0. Upload the code. Notice that this upload is happening over USB. We need this connection to upload the firmware that will allow us to then upload code wirelessly. If we go ahead and open up the serial monitor and reset the board, 
we should see the IP address assigned by the wireless router printed on the screen. We should also see that after 15 seconds pass, our code for blinking the LED once per second should be running. Now we're able to upload the code wirelessly, so if you want to, you could unplug the board from USB, go back to the Arduino IDE, go to Tools, Port, and you'll notice that there is a new port called ESP8266, and at the end, we'll have the IP address that your Wi-Fi router assigned to the chip. If you don't see this option, go ahead and restart the Arduino IDE. Once you see it, go ahead and select it. And at that point, you can unplug the board. And in my case, I'm going to change the delay of the blink from 1000 to 100 milliseconds so that I can see a difference on this new file. Notice that once you hit upload, it'll ask you for a password. That's where that line that we uncommented comes into play. I left the password as the default one, two, three and I'm going to put that in. Notice that two things happened after I hit upload. The password field comes up again and I can read down here that I receive an error with no response from device. If you remember, we wrote inside our loop function a 15 second period of time where the board expects that firmware to be uploaded. After that happens, our own code for blinking the LED runs without checking for a new firmware upload. So what we need to do is a little bit tricky. We'll need to reset the board, type in the password one, two, three, and really quickly hit the upload button. As you can see, if we do it with enough time, the upload actually completes the password field doesn't pop back up, it resets the board, and after 15 seconds pass, we'll see the new code running. In our case, the blinking LED is an indication with the faster rate that we modify. This is just one solution for programming the ESP8266 wirelessly. The problem is that if we want new code to be uploaded, we need to unplug power to the board and plug it back in so that it resets. In another video, we will show you how to use a web server running on the ESP8266 that can receive that new firmware file without hitting reset. If you like our videos, you can go to our channel and click the support button. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave us a comment. Until next time.